Hey guys, it's John without the H from Sin RC. The long awaited setup video for the Night Timber X is here. I have had this plane for a very long time. We're talking at least 800 flights by this point, and it is held up. Held up quite well, in fact. I'm, I'm shocked at how well this thing has held up. I've had this plane for a full year. Its first flight was on January 10th of 2021. Now it is currently what? I don't even know what today is anymore. The 12th, I think. So it's uh, it's been around the block. It's flown quite a bit. I'd say it's flown more off water than anything else. Uh, back when I first got into this hobby, I studiously avoided flying off grass and really just enjoyed flying off the lake. But now I usually fly off grass and pavement. Okay, throttle cut has been enabled on my transmitter so I don't accidentally throttle up and cut my arm off or severely lacerate my wrist. Okay, let's go with the basics of setup here. This is a really easy setup. At least it is in my opinion. I'll show you how it's set up on my iX20. For those of you guys with a Spectrum radio, you can easily adapt this system over to yours. We'll start with the aircraft type. This plane is set up as a one aileron, two flaps configuration. Horizon in the manual tells you to do one aileron, one flap, and then do some manual mixing to get the flaps to work together. You don't really need to do that. You can just do it as one aileron, two flaps. I'll show you why. And we have a normal tail type. Okay, pretty simple on the setup. To get the one aileron, two flap configuration to work correctly, you will need to connect your flaps to individual channels. If you look inside of my airplane, you should be able to see inside, inside pretty well. The right aileron, or sorry, the right flapper on here is connected to port number five and the left flapper on is connected to port number six. I use a zip tie system so I know exactly what is what. I used to use, uh, well, I don't use zip ties as much anymore. I use electrical tape now, it's just it's a little easier to do. But let's go ahead and get this wing set up and I'll, I'll talk to you about the system that I use. So when I go back and look at models later on, I know exactly what control goes to what lead every single time. And I don't have to fudge around with it and figure it out and try to remember what goes to what. This is a pretty ingenious system to me. Uh, to you, it may not be very efficient, but it all really is coming down to personal preference and how you prefer to set these things up. So I use red zip ties for the left and I use right for the or red or green for the right. So we'll go ahead and connect the aileron to the red. It doesn't really matter. It's a Y connector, but for consistency's sake, I like to keep it the same. Connect the green to the right. So one tells me, or one zip tie tells me it's an aileron. Go ahead and get it connected in the right order. So signal to signal. Two means it's a flap. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the two green zip tied servo lead to the port that it connects to on the side. And same thing for the left side. Signal to signal. Now that's connected correctly. The lights don't really need zip ties. There's only one place for them to go. You could plug them in either direction. It doesn't make any difference as long as the signal wire, point, or wire points to where it's supposed to go. That way the lights flash and the red light doesn't flash instead. Because if you flip this upside down and it's not pointed the correct direction, the anti-collision light will blink or not blink, it will uh, stay solid, but the, or the beacon, whatever you want to call it, the beacon will stay solid, but the red light will blink, as you can see here. That's all that happens if you turn it upside down. No big deal, really. Okay, same thing for the right side. And to get the innards to glow, you would need to connect the Y cable. Well, I put a Y cable on mine to the uh, power lead in there for the internal lighting. And that just goes ahead and connects with one blue light or wire so I know that it goes to a light. All right, just shove all that in there. It doesn't have to be precise. I will show you the antenna placement though. I always put my antenna, one going down the, the fuselage here and then one going sideways along the bottom of it. That way it gets maximum signal reception. Uh, one going sideways along the bottom is, is useful so the transmitter gets the maximum amount of signal or the transmitter produces the amount, maximum amount of signal to the plane as it's flying overhead and then the one on the top kind of catches it when it's upside down. That's my theory on it anyway. So you can see that my flapperons aren't doing anything, but now they are. It looks like I got some trim on the model that I need to 
fix or it looks like yeah it just needs to be adjusted a little bit i have to change that later it's not entirely centered but right now to show you how this is set up i'm using 150 percent rates so you can see my elevator moves up 150 percent and down 114 percent the reasoning for this is that the elevator will actually bind i don't know how well you can see this so i'm going to sit down and put my head up uh, the elevator actually binds if it goes any further than that and it will try to rip out of the pocket that it's sitting in inside the plane it doesn't do that when it goes up just down ailerons travel 150 percent flaps travel 150 percent to give you an idea of how far that is you can look at it from the side so i can turn it this way Could I get bigger deflections? Maybe, um, but I think the foam would start, I had to cut some foam to do it. Uh, the rudder is pretty good too. I need to adjust the push rods a little bit. looks like the rudder took a little bit of a hit when it touched the tail inadvertently the other day. So it just kind of needs to be bent back in place basically. But the rudder when centered goes all the way this far and that far. So it does need to be centered because it shouldn't be smacking the side of that. I haven't done anything with this plane since I flew it the last time you guys saw it for the anniversary special. I do have reverse thrust, which comes pretty much automatically set up in the receiver, or not the receiver, the ESC to channel 7. That's a pretty simple setup. So, nothing major there. I have the flaps dumping out 150% as well. So they, I mean, they really bring this thing to a, a crawl in the air. I was tempted to make it uh, set up with Crow, but I don't think it really needs it, to be Close honest up. with you. Let's get into the mixing so you guys know what we're looking at here. Pretty simple mixes. Because we're using the, uh, the two-flap system, I have mixed elevators to right flap to get a snap, snap flap. Flaps. That causes the elevators to move down as the elevator, or, as, yeah, as the elevator's pulled up, the flaps move down that causes the plane to be very uh, snappy and pitch response it works inverse for pushing up so it works both ways i have elevator flaps that i use for my harrier mix um, but let me go ahead and show you the the travel range on this all you have to do is set elevator to right flap on this one and then it's negative 125 percent to get it to go fully up to 150 or so and then 100 percent negative on the second rate to get it to go 150 down. Elevator flaps. For the elevator flaps, when I pull the elevator back, I want the flaps to move up. That causes the wing root to reduce its area. So you create two separated flows of air across the model. This doesn't stall, but this does. Uh, normally that would be disaster, but at some point you start like if you throttle manage correctly with the elevator flaps, you will actually see this plane fly around in a stable Harrier and it won't wing rock, wing rock at all. And you can still get aileron control even in the uh, post-stall condition for flying in a Harrier. Works the same way going down. It just means that the flaps move in the same direction as the elevator instead of in opposition. For the flapperons, um, because of the spectrum mixing bug, I had to mix aileron to gear to get it to move the flaps together. Uh, that's pretty simple. It's set to switch D2. Ailerons. So switch D2 controls this. Uh, when switch D2 is pulled down, the flaps do nothing except work as flaps. Flap. Flaps up. When flap switch D2 is up, there are flapperons. Flap so they coordinate with the roll and produce a very significant amount of roll rate. It's uh, quite impressive how fast this thing can roll and, and be tumbled around. That's the majority of the mixing. Actually, I think that's all of the mixing. There, there really doesn't need much, if anything. To uh, look into the receiver to show you how that's all set up, I'll show you my gy uh, gyro settings here. Go into the AS3X settings and go to the gains. And I'm using a simple setup of 45% roll, 60% pitch, and 60% yaw. This can be turned down as needed. Currently, it's on relative gains, so my slider in the back here controls how intense they are. If I pull the slider down, they turn off. I pull the slider up, they go up. If I put throttle uh, cut on on my other models, like my jets, these values would be controlled by the amount of throttle that I give it. But on this model, it's unnecessary. Uh, and a lot of times I just fly with it turned way down. So it's if you want to see what it looks like in normal mode, let's go ahead and uh, just pick the plane up and start rotating it side to side. 
Oh, it would help if I had actually locked it in place with the wing joiner. So it produces a little bit of stabilization. Not a whole lot. Uh, to show you the, the servos, um, for those of you guys who have asked, the servos are AGF RC 9 gram servos. You can get them on Amazon for about 20 bucks for a two pair. They are really good servos. The, the two that are in the plane, I've had them in there for a full year now. Hundreds of flights. Neither one of them is stripped. I'm actually going to fix the rudder servo while I'm here. Might as well get it lined up and straightened. It's just easier to do it while you're on camera so you guys can see how simple this stuff is. Okay, it just needs a slight adjustment and just hold it and torque it back down so it doesn't go anywhere. And if I was to... I'll oh, get that airware closed. Lovely. Just reopen it. It's still working. It's just not a problem, really. So now the rudder is centered where it's supposed to be. Uh, I could fix the uh, aileron on, on camera, but actually it looks like the flap's just sticking up a little too much. That's not really a big deal to fix either. Uh, to fix that, I'm going to flip this plane over just so you guys can see how simple the adjustments are on this model. I mean, this thing has been through so much abuse and so much flying, and uh, I have i wouldn't say I've crashed it, but I've had a couple of uh, hard, very hard landings. Uh, where's the wing plate? I must have put it down Oh, over there on my little iX20 swag bag. So I just place this in place real quick. That way we don't have to waste time screwing in stuff. That's not what you guys came here to see. You came here to see a setup video. Let's get that done real quick. Okay. All right. Flip this plane back over. So which, which one is it? Is this one right here? Okay. So what's going on here is the flap is just slightly out of tune and this is the one that actually tends to pop out occasionally so I've been using little uh, clips to hold it in place I've actually have flown this plane with a droopy flap before just because of the the uh, little keeper on here doesn't want to hold okay rotate in twice and that should fix it so that it's aligned properly there we go completely flush simple easy fix I can put a keeper on it later. Uh, it's not important for what we're doing right now. If you want to set the lights up on this plane, if you haven't actually used it, it's really easy to. Let's get this battery out of here so you can actually see the connection wire that's in here. You can kind of see some of the improvements I've made to the gear. And I say improvements lightly because this plane's been through hell. <laughs> it's been flown quite a bit. I learned a lot of what I know about flying on this plane. So but yeah, it's a simple connection with a JST connector. Uh, you just plug it in and it's all good to go. Really easy to set up. Really easy to, to get connected and, and moving. It looks impressive as hell at night, too. I really like the way this thing looks at night. I've flown this thing in the middle of uh, winter at like 8 p.m. Uh, the sun's been down for like four hours and it's like pitch black outside. Um, if you do find that you have landing gear issues at any point, like you can just fill it with Gorilla Glue. That's what I did when I smacked it into the ground too hard one time. Um, I, I believe it's a myth that timber gear aren't very strong. This plane has flown 800 times, uh, at least... Uh, 30 to 40 percent of those flights have been off of land on these wheels. This is the same exact set of gear. I mean, look at how strong this is. It's crazy how strong this is. So I could probably beat it on the on the table and it wouldn't get damaged. Just got to straighten this gear spring out real quick. But and if you're landing these planes like you should be landing a, a stall bush plane, you really should have no problems. They they plop right down, man. I mean, there's like. Now they're very forgiving. I mean, you can see how much play these these springs have. It doesn't take much to land them well either. Just a little bit of effort and you get them down safe and they'll keep flying as long as the, the foam doesn't disintegrate. But uh, if there's anything I missed, uh, let me know, guys. I'm pretty sure I covered just about everything. I do fly this plane primarily in 2200 Smart Packs. They hover really well um, because the, uh, the center of gravity kind of gets pushed to about right here on the wing makes it nice and stable. I don't fly with the steel joiner rod anymore. I forgot to mention that. That was causing it to be way too tail heavy. Uh, so I actually have a carbon fiber rod in there and that's, that's stabilized it. So it's still crazy 3D, but not so much that the plane is basically uncontrollable outside of a, uh, outside of a hover. So 
that should cover pretty much all the setup. Uh, again, you can see the AGF servos in here. You can even hear them uh, before I wrap up. You can hear the quality of these things. They are much more precise than the stock servos do. So one more time, I'll just make a quick demo. The stock servos don't have enough resolution in them. So when you go to do uh, your flap to elevator mix, a lot of people I've seen fly this thing, they talk about how much it porpoises because the the flaps move in visible increments rather than moving nice and smooth like mine do, as you can see. Flaps up. Um, as I'm pulling mine up and down, you can see it's very, very precise. And that's even with the innermost hole on the on the elevator and that's like even on the ailerons up there on the outermost hole almost all the time not even a single problem they all move perfectly smooth there's plenty of torque uh these these things have so much torque um you can you can throw this plane around like a rag doll it doesn't care uh it I'm surprised it hasn't disintegrated yet with how i've flown it <laughs> and if it does disintegrate i'll probably just buy another one because they're just so much fun uh, I'm quite proud of this plane. It's I've had this one the longest out of all of them. The next longest one that I've owned has probably been the uh, the Yas 39 Griffin there, which I've had for getting close to a year and a couple of months here. I would say the extra, but that one uh, took a tumble when the ESC crapped itself, uh, and I had to replace the fuselage and the wings. But other than that, yeah. So I hope that helps you guys out. Um, if you have any other questions, just drop them in the comments. This should give you a good setup idea of what to do. I will put this in my Google Drive folder for you guys. So those of you with an iX20 can easily uh, take this and just import what I've done. You don't have to do any real setup work except double check my work, make sure that you like what you see and adjust it to your own satisfaction. That being said, that's all I can come up with. So. Thanks for watching, guys. It's been John from Sin RC. Don't forget and thrust we trust. See y'all next time.